Are you improving as a photographer? This is a question that I've personally asked myself many, many times. And over the last couple of years, I've started asking it more. In fact, about a year and a half ago, I decided that I was going to try and find ways to look at my photography in such a way that I knew if I was improving or if I wasn't. And in this video, I'm actually going to discuss these three steps which I came across through trial and error. And I'm hopefully going to help anyone which is looking to discover if they're improving or not. The first thing that's important to know, though, is if you're trying to progress based on yourself or if you're doing it based on another photographer out there in the world of social media or wherever they are. It's a dangerous thing, actually. It's really important to base it on yourself rather than them because really you're looking at your progression, not someone else's. And this seems very logical when we're talking about it, but you wouldn't believe how easy it is to get distracted by what someone else is doing and base your improvement on them. So the three steps, what are they? Well, the first one is composition, arguably one of the most important areas of photography. But it's really important to know if your composition is improving. And the way that I do this is to look back at previous photos. But I do this in a specific way. I make sure I never look back any earlier than six months from the first photograph. So if I want to compare my latest photograph, I'll travel back six months and look at a photograph from around that time period. This is really important because in photography, it's all about making small incremental changes over time. You don't just go out with your camera to one location as a landscape photographer, let's say, and suddenly you take some photos and you become you know, a know all being of photography. You know, everything about all different weather conditions, different compositions and everything else. It just doesn't happen like that. So it's important to get experience. And because you need that experience, you need time to have a look at if you've improved or if you haven't. Take a look at a couple of these photos here, which I'm going to show you on my examples. So the first one is a photo which I took when I was in Dovedale. This is going back about 12 months ago. And this photo at the time, I was super happy with it. I thought, yeah, great image, so happy with it. But now it's unavoidable for me to look at this photo and not see the glaring errors. The errors being that there is a big, huge foreground and that just completely distracts from the lovely, nice leading line to the hillside in the distance. It just takes up too much of the image and it really spoils the flow. It's still a nice image, don't get me wrong, but it could have been significantly improved if it would have been a better composition. Also, to add to that, it was over edited as well. The next image we're going to look at is a picture of, I think it's Lumsdale Falls actually. I highly recommend you visit here if you've never been. It's a beautiful place near Matlock with a series of waterfalls. But anyway, this photo. The leading line in the composition of this photo is super simple. It travels from the front left hand side of the image all the way up to the top right hand side. And you've just got this clean composition which is led all the way up to the top by this waterfall and river. So that's a difference there. And there was about, about seven or eight months difference between these two photos. So enough time for me to see if I'd improved or not. I will say though, it's probably important to look at more than one image because you want to get an overall uh, view on if you've improved or if you haven't. And doing that just with one image is probably not the best way to do this. Number two is editing. Okay, so a lot of you don't know this, but I actually started off as a photo editor. This was before I got into photography. I used to do a lot of photo editing for some big websites. I then moved in into photography after this and I got just bit by the bug. I got such a passion for it and I absolutely loved it. But as you can imagine, a lot of my early images were pretty poor. The, the actual quality of the images was not very good. So for instance, what I used to do is I used to use my editing knowledge to try and rescue and save a bad photo. And yeah, most times this didn't work out. Sometimes I could wing it and it would look all right, but this was definitely not a way to progress as a photographer. So now I ask myself two questions. 
am I trying to rescue the photo or am I trying to improve the photo? And from this standpoint, I'm able to know if I've took a good photo at the beginning, if the exposure was correct, the composition and everything else. Because if you're rescuing a photo, then you're actually saving it, which means and implies that it was bad to start with. Whereas if you're improving it, you've actually got a good photo to start with and you're trying to make it even better. Number three and finally is actually a question I'm going to ask. Are you a one trick pony? Might be a bit of a harsh way of saying this actually, but I've watched many videos on YouTube. I love watching landscape vlogs and different kind of vlogs from photography backgrounds. They really interest me. But a lot of information which I see, I just feel is not entirely correct. And what I say, what I mean when I say this is, the one thing that stands out to me here is when a photographer will say, a landscape photographer, for instance, you should only shoot in the morning and you only shoot in the evening, specifically sunrise and sunset. Okay, so arguably this is the best time of the day to shoot. You get the best light and you can get some of the best photographs. But by doing this, you stick a roadblock right in the way of your creativity. And this can really stunt it. So it's important to explore different times of the day, explore different weather patterns and conditions, and get out and you know get more creative with your photos. So for instance, go out and shoot on a bright sunny day. Don't think, oh, this is a terrible photography day, because actually it can be some of the best black and white photo days, bar none, because you get them lovely deep shadows and you get them harsh highlights, which create beautiful contrast in your images. So my advice here is if you want to progress and see your progress progression as a photographer, you need to be more creative. And a great way to do this is to explore all times of the day available to you and then just really get to this extra knowledge as a photographer. Okay, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that these steps are actually going to be able to be guideposts for you as well to see if you're improving as a photographer. They've helped me, so hopefully they're going to help you. If you're new to the channel and this is your first time arriving, then please subscribe to the channel and join the growing community here. Otherwise, if you don't want to, then just have a lovely day, whatever you're doing, and I'll see you hopefully in the next video.